And good morning. We thank you for joining us once again here at the Come and View Our Ministries for another great and glorious Bible study on this beautiful wet Wednesday rainy morning. Um, we thank you all for all your continued prayers. And we thank you for your support of this ministry. And as always, we pray for you all as you all are praying for us, for those that may be going through things, those that may be sick or family members may be sick. We are praying for you all. We want you to know that we love you all and we pray that God will continue to bless and keep you all. Let us get right into what God has for us today. We're looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 through 35. And of course, we're still under the theme of how to deal with people in a Christian way. And uh, so we're looking at Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 45. And it says, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you for another great opportunity to come before this your people, Lord God. And as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here, Lord. We pray that you bless this word to go out and accomplish that which you send out to accomplish and will not return void. Father God, help us to keep our eyes and mind focused and steadfast on you. Father God, that we will be able, Lord God, to be hearers of your word and not only be hearers, but be doers as well. Bless our time here together, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to deal with the subject, how to deal with people in a Christian way when you know the shade is real. How to deal with people in a Christian way when you know the shade is real. And I know a lot of y'all are probably laughing when you hear this subject and all kinds of stuff. And it can be funny, but it's really not funny because at the end of the day, it's not easy dealing with people and you know how they feel about you. You know their thoughts about you. You know what they've said about you. You know that they've tried to create pitfalls for you. And you know this. But you still have to treat them as God would want you to treat them. And that's not easy. Even, even me being a preacher, it's still not easy to treat people the way God wants you to treat them. And you know what they're doing. You know what they're saying. You know what they're trying to do. They're trying to dig a ditch for you to fall in. But the old people say, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. Because the ditch you set for me is going to be the one you're going to fall in. So we have to understand and know that we have to learn to deal with things the way God will want us to deal with them. And we're not perfect. So that doesn't mean every single time, oh, I'm going to deal with it in the right manner. We're not perfect. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. But God loves us and he is a forgiving God. And God is continuously trying to show us how to do it the way he wants us to do it. Jesus left a whole lot of examples of how to deal with people in that manner. Because you got to understand. Now, Judas had 12, I mean, Jesus had 12 close friends in his circle. 12. Out of the 12, there was only one that betrayed him. And then you had one that denied him. So you really only had 10 that really stuck with him. But you had one to betray him and one denied him. Peter was the one that denied him. Now everybody knows Peter. Peter was the cussing prophet. Peter, he believed in God. He taught God's word. But he was one of them ones you didn't want to mess with because you mess with him. Ain't no telling what he may say. So the night that Jesus was taken, Peter cut the man's ear off. He, he had an anger issue too. He cut the, cut the dude's ear off. And then after that, Peter was out warming by the fire. And they said, oh yeah, that's him. You, you, you know him. You know Jesus. You, you hung with him. I don't know that man. Then he was somewhere else, and they said to him, yeah, you know him, you hung with him. You, know, I don't know him. And then the third time, when they said, he began to cuss and everything, I don't know him, I don't know him. And then the cop 
scroll. And then he remembered what Jesus had told him. He said, before the cock crowed, you would deny me three times. And he did that. But Jesus never stopped loving Peter. He never stopped being there for him. It's just the fact that the matter is he just came out point blank and period and told Peter, hey, dog, this is what you're going to do. You saying you got my back. You saying you down for the cause. You say you ride or die. But at the end of the day, when the chips are down, you're going to deny me. No, 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 not me. Not me. I can hear Peter saying, not me. I'm not the one. Uh -uh, I would never do that. Hmm. And you did it. How many of you have dealt with folks that said they were always going to be there for you? They were always going to be on your side. Anytime you need me, call me. Anything you need, I got your back. And when the time came, the phone didn't get answered. The text message didn't get a reply. Nothing happened. Where were they? Well, your guess just as good as mine, because I'd have been through it before, too. And I wonder, hmm, you said you would be there. I called, you didn't answer. I text, you didn't answer. But then, days later, did you get everything squared away? I'm sorry I missed the phone call. Well, it wasn't that you missed the phone call. I learned one thing about us as people. We say things that sound good. When folks are going through stuff, the first thing, if you need anything, anything at all, just call them. We're going to be right there for you. It sounds good, but are you really going to do it? That's the key factor. How to deal with Christian folks. How to deal with people in a Christian way when you know the shade is real. We know people's intentions. Some folks' intentions are not always good. Some people will look you dead in your face and tell you a lie. And you know they lie. That's the bad part. You know the person lying to you. But they'll do it anyway. Why? Because they think you don't know that they're lying. But you actually do. Jesus understood and knew that Peter was going to deny him. Even though Peter was trying to convince himself. Like I tell my wife a lot sometimes. Who are you trying to convince? You trying to convince me or are you trying to convince yourself? I already know what the deal is. I tell my kids that. I already know. Me and my wife have told our children on several occasions, there is nothing you can do that we don't already know about or that we did not invent and that we didn't already do. So at the end of the day, Jesus already knew what he was going to do. But the fact that the matter is some of us are hard-headed and we're going to try to keep it going and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus was like, you know what? Okay, Peter, whatever you say, I know you're going to do it. And before that cock crowed three times, before that cock crowed three times, Peter denied him. And Peter realized it afterwards. He was like, man, Jesus did tell me that. And I would already done it now. But too late. So he had one to deny him. Then he had one to just betray him altogether. Sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. Now ask yourself the question, is there any way I could sell God out at all? After all he's done for you, after all the ways you made, he made for you, after all the things he brought you through, can you really just say, I just turned my back on God and betray him altogether and sell him out? I personally couldn't do it. After walking with him and talking with him and being there, the disciples had it so much differently from us. Why? He was there with them. He walked with them. He ate with them. He talked to them. He shared with them. They could physically touch him. He could touch them. And they still, Judas still betrayed him. And then came back. Y'all listen to me now. Came back around Jesus like everything was okay. Now, you know you just left in Matthew 26, 14 and 16 through 16. You know you just left the chief priest and you came to them and said unto them, what will you give me if I deliver him unto you? And that's why some people are, hey, what will you give me? I'll tell you some information about such and such and such. 
And that's why you got to learn to be careful of who you share your business with. Because some folks will take your business and run it all up and down the street. And you wondering how the folks over on Wilma Rudolph know about your business and you live over in Hopkinsville. But they know exactly what you're doing. Why? Because you don't told the wrong person. You have to be careful. Even, and I say this too, even when God is telling you to do stuff, be careful of who you tell it to because not everybody can handle it. Not everybody will understand it. And some folk will try to get in the way and stop and block it. Some people will try to stop what God has for you. So you got to be careful of who you tell. You got to be careful of who you talk to. Sometimes it's best to just be quiet and just talk to the Lord about it. Why? One thing I love about talking to God is you ain't never got to worry about it going nowhere. You ain't got to worry about John, Betty, Sally, Sue, Jim, Ricky, Bobby, any of them finding out about what's going on because he's not going to share it with nobody. But when you share your, your life with other people, you run that risk. And so these people, so uh, Judas sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. They said, here you go. They counted it out to him. He took it. He saw the opportunity and he walked away. So in Matthew 26, 17, 17 through 25, you will see that they were at the feast. Now, after you done sold Jesus out for this 30 pieces of silver, you show up at the feast like everything cool. Now, I'm going to interject something here because some people need a little bit more help in understanding where I'm coming from when I'm talking about the shade is real. A lot of y'all, and you may not want to admit it, but you do watch reality TV. And in that, they throw so much shade at each other. They always talking about each other, putting each other down. Girl, you know you ain't got this, but you trying to make it seem like you got this, that, and the other. Dude, man, what you, what you doing over there? You shouldn't be over there. All, all kind of foolishness. All kind of foolishness. You know, and the contrary to popular belief, a lot of shade and stuff gets thrown around in the church also. Uh-oh. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, saying what I'm saying. It gets thrown around in church as well. And so we're wondering and trying to figure out, how do I deal with it? How do I keep my Christian composure when I come to church or when I come around certain folk? How do I do that? You know, I'm finna show you. Jesus was sitting there with his disciples, already knowing full well, Number one, again, let's recap. Number one, he knew already that Peter was going to deny him. Already knew. Number two, he knew where Judas had just come from. He already knew Judas was going to sell him out. And when I say the shade is real, they sitting around the table. And the Lord is talking to them. And in the midst of him talking to them, he brings up the subject. One of y'all is going to betray me. Everybody at the table, what? Really? Lord, is it me? Is, is it me, Jesus? Is it me? And the main one, and it's funny, but the main one that did it, ask the question. Then Judas said, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? And Jesus said, Thou hast said it. Most folk today would be like, hmm, do he know something? You know, but he smiled. He ate with them. He loved them. He prayed with them and for them, even though he knew what was going on. He knew his hour had come. He was getting ready to go to the cross. He already knew that they were going to pull his beard out by the roots. They, he already knew they were going to spit on him. He already knew they were going to march him from judgment hall to judgment hall. He knew all of this. He already knew that the same folk, when he was riding into the city on the dome, that were hollering, Hosanna, Hosanna, were going to be the same folk. In the end, that were going to be shouting, what? Crucify him, crucify him. But what did he say when he was stretched out on that cross? 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He loved them anyway. And that's what we have to do. Is it easy? No. But we have to do it because that's what God requires. We got to be able to smile in their face knowing that you're the main one that's setting traps for me. Knowing that you're the main one that's talking about me and spreading lies on me. Knowing that you're the main one doing what you're doing. But I learned as I get older that we got to learn to kill folks with kindness. You smile and you keep going. And you already know what's going on. But you smile, you keep going, and you just talk to God about it. I've learned I have such a peace at times when I talk to God about things. You know, when I'm upset about stuff, I tend to get to myself or, or when my family is gone or not around, and I just start talking to God about it. Yeah, and, and to most folk, you would think, why is he fussing? Why is he doing? And it's not that I'm fussing, but at the time I'm frustrated. And so I'm talking to God about, it. I'm like, God, I can't deal with this no more. I don't understand why this is happening. Why is this going on? This going on? And the Lord is like, okay, I'm listening. And then when you get through talking, then he'll tell you how to deal with it. But he allows you to get it out. Because he already knows that's just human nature. This is how they were created. So, but he lets you know in the end how to deal with them. Even when you look at Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 through 33, how he talked to the Sadducees, knowing full well the conversations that they were having, knowing that they were trying to get him flipped up with the questions that they would ask. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had a bad habit of always trying to make Jesus look bad. But in the end, he wound up making them look bad. Because when they began to ask questions, and they would try, begin to try to get him tripped up with the questions that they would ask. Jesus would say, would tell them this. Jesus answered and said unto them, you do error, not knowing the scripture, nor the power of God. But you're trying to get me messed up, but you don't really know like you think you know. He was the son of God. Don't you think he knows the word much better than you do? And when he replied to them with an answer, everybody was always astonished and looking crazy in the face. When he got through. In Matthew 22, 34, and 46, when he was talking to the Pharisees, did the same thing. He knew how to straighten it all out. Jesus knew how to smile and keep going. Jesus left, as we prepare to close, Jesus left a lot of examples to show us as Christians how to deal with messy, petty, and unsaved people. He showed us how to do it. What, is it an easy task? No, it's not. But he's showing us daily that you can do it. There's an example I won't leave here as I get ready to close this Bible study. I remember um, my wife was telling me a story one time of something that I told her that I don't remember telling her. But she was saying about my mom. My mom had a lady when she was working that was very rude to her all the time. This woman would say all kinds of stuff to my mom. You know, I hope your car blow up. I hope this happened to you, that happened to you. And my mama would still speak to this woman every day. She would still speak to her and, you know, good morning and keep going. Have a good day. Keep going. And this woman was rude constantly every single day. Sometimes my mom would come home upset and, and crying about the situation because you, I mean, you really just don't know nowadays what people will do or the lengths that they will go through when they don't like somebody. And my dad, I think, told her to just pray about it. And so as they were praying about it, one day she went to work and the lady asked her, she said, Helen, why are you so nice to me? She said, I done said all kinds of stuff to you. Told you I hope your car blow up. I hope you get sick. I hope this happened, that happened, whatever. Why is it that you were so nice to me through all of that? And basically, putting it in my own words, because I don't remember the whole story, but basically I felt like that my mom probably told her that, you know what, this is what God requires me to do. And, you know, I just learned that, that you kill people with kindness. And you just pray for them. 
She said, was it easy? No. But at the same time, I knew the only way that God was going to bless me in this situation and for the situation to work out in the right manner, I had to do what I needed to do. So I need you to understand, in order to deal with people on this type, you just stay lined up with God's word. You keep doing what you need to do. Do as Jesus did. Smile in their face, even though you know what's going on. He didn't let the effects, he didn't let it affect his actions or his attitude towards the people. And we must learn from his example and do what he did. Keep going. God has a blessing for each and every one of us. But you got to understand, we're the ones that block our blessing, not the other person. So what do we have to do? Stay focused on God. Keep calling on God. If you get stressed out, talk to him about it. But learn how to deal with people and deal with things in the right way. Because that keeps your blood pressure down. That keeps you from being stressed. And it keeps you from being upset all the time. Put it in God's hand. I promise you, he'll fix them. He will fix the haters, the caters, and the debaters. And he will turn your situation around. I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you all. I know it's, it's kind of funny sometimes. And then also it's not a big uh, topic of discussion. But I pray that it has been a blessing to you all. And I pray that you will follow the example that God has left for us. Be blessed.